Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Tersolini, and in this episode, we are going to hear from Mark LaFrance, who is with the U.S. Department of Energy Building Technology Office. He's going to talk about windows and advanced glazing systems. We hope you enjoy this special presentation. Hello, my name is Mark LaFrance. I work for the Department of Energy. My main job is window R&D, but I also support the residential team for field validation on other technologies such as heat pumps um, and heat pump water heaters. Uh, when people look at windows, we have certainly a connection to the outdoors, but almost everybody has some relationship to windows. It might be in the wintertime when you're very cold sitting near the window or in the summertime when the sun's energy is too hot. So there's always this interaction. And so when we talk about windows, um, you know, most people can relate to the challenges associated with them. So in, in today's talk, I'm going to give you the background about the windows, but go into some of the, uh, the different characterization of programs that are in place, and then mostly talk about some of the next generation of technologies and opportunities. First, uh, if you look at the building uh, consumption, it's it's obviously very large. Here's a breakdown of where that energy is. In the table, you'll see windows. Windows are responsible for about 10% of the building's uh, load, which comes out to $38 billion per year. But windows don't really consume energy. Uh, they, you know, heating and cooling equipment consume the energy. But we also take into account daylighting impacts, uh, the ventilation. So windows are really uh, are impacted by about 50% of the load uh, but they consume about 10% of the energy or are responsible for the consumption of 10% of the energy. The, the heat and light transfer through windows is pretty complex. So um, there's conduction, convection, radiation in, in play. And we, one of the things people have heard about is, you know, multiple glazings or double pane uh, glazing, which has an air cavity. Then, of course, that can be filled with a, a, an inner gas like argon or krypton. We have low E surfaces that stop the radiation flow uh, that also uh, reflect the uh, uh, sol solar uh, uh, spectrum or basically the near infrared uh, and allow the visible light to come through. Anyway, this is quite complex. If you go to this link for LBNL or look at their, their uh, website, uh, they're the core national lab for window technology, and there's a lot more materials there that can uh, teach you about all of the detailed uh, heat and light transfers through windows. The, uh, this is a set of software tools that LBNL maintains, and these tools help you design the, the, light, the optical characteristics of the, the glazing package, and then we put those into a tool called Therm, which is the design of the frames and the heat transfer through the frame, and then the entire um, set goes into the Windows tool, and that basically gives you the performance rating of a window. So windows are designed and rated, and, and the, you'll, so you'll see that the uh, National Federation Rating Council and then the uh, Attachment Energy Rating Council, they, they provide ratings for windows and shading uh, materials. And this is all done on the software, on the computer, where you can design and rate the windows for performance. So it's much easier than the days where we would um, you know, actually do uh, prototype measurements. Here's an example of the label. So from the left, we have um, the NFRC label, and it shows you the U-factor and the solar heat gain, visible transmittance, air leakage. Um, and then the middle is a label for window film, and it, it would show you what the film would produce uh, when you put on different types of uh, a base product, a uh, different type of glazing on the base product. And the one on the right is, the, is for uh, window attachments, like shading uh, in uh, storm windows, and that's from the AERC. Uh, these are the types of, of labels that people use for determining uh, the performance and also potentially for complying with uh, particular or various uh, uh, energy efficiency programs. This is the Energy Star program that is administered by the Environmental Protection Agency, and we would call this a distinction label. So when the consumer looks at the window product, it either has an Energy Star label or it doesn't. And if it has a label, that means it complies with various criteria based on which zone you are in the country. So the label would indicate that it's compliant for that particular zone. And it makes it very easy for a consumer to look for a 
uh, Energy Star complying product. Now, the underlying criteria is quite complex. There's a lot of uh, different trade-offs in, in the northern zone, but this basically is administered by the EPA uh, using the uh, performance ratings, as I previously mentioned, and then it's very easily, it either complies or it doesn't. It makes it very easy for the consumer. There's also a uh, low E or low mistivity uh, storm window criteria program that's not shown here, but that's also in existence. And so here's a market snapshot, and this represents the current sales of windows in the marketplace. And as you can see, the majority are double pane low E windows, which are also Energy Star windows generally. Uh, but there's still some remaining uh, double clear windows being sold. Um, and the majority of the stock or the existing inventory of buildings that are in people's houses are mostly double clear or single pane windows, which are very low performing compared to what we have today. And of course, the, the best windows that are being sold are triple pane windows, and they represent a few percentage points of the market uh, place. And the goal of DOE, of course, is to increase that number through uh, different activities. So here's our performance targets that you would find in our uh, Windows and Research and Development Opportunity Report. There's a link there. You can also just Google that for, uh, for DOE and find that. And you can see that um, we're looking at very aggressive levels. For example, um, an R13 window for residential or an R10 for commercial. And that, an R10, is, it's the inverse of the U factor. So an R10 window would be a 0.1 uh, U factor. And for R13 residential, that comes out to like a 0.07 or 0.08 uh, U factor. So very aggressive compared to where we are today. The latest breakthrough on Highland Singing Windows is what we call a thin triple pane glazing. And this is where we replace the conventional thick piece of glass in the center of the insulated glass unit with a thin piece of glass. And it is a non-structural layer, so it's more of a baffle between the two cavities. And the cavities are thinner so that we can put Krypton gas in there and two layers of low E coatings. And the entire form and fit will, will drop into the frame of an existing double pane window. So it no longer has an impact on the weight uh, or having uh, re or requiring manufacturers to redesign the frame, which really reduces the, uh, the barriers to adoption. We're also conducting a pretty uh, extensive uh, field study of thin triple pane windows by Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. And you can see from the map here, uh, many locations around the country. And so we're trying to validate the energy performance, but also things like the ease of installation. So one of the big complaints about uh, conventional triple pane windows is that they're very heavy to install. Sometimes you require extra people to install the window based on the weight. Now we're trying to validate that these thin triple pane windows can be installed the same as any double pane window. And that would make a, a, a significant breakthrough uh, for the market adoption, and, and uh, this is what's being validated as we speak. So another key element besides highly insulated windows is variable solar control and daylighting. So anytime a window is sold in the United States, it's got a fixed solar heat gain coefficient, which means it allows a certain amount of, of the energy from the sun, which is you know visible light and near infrared. Um, but a dyna dynamic window has the best of both worlds. In the summertime, it, re it uh, reflects the vast majority of the, the sun's energy, somewhere on the order of like 92% or, or more. And then in the wintertime, when you want to gain the passive uh, heating benefit, it allows a lot more uh, energy to flow than what a uh, double pane low E window would have, somewhere close to like 60%, whereas a typical solar heat gain may be 30%. Uh, and you can, you can uh, tail that for a little bit higher or lower uh, depending on where you are in the, the country, but any static glazing is always suboptimal. And a dyna dynamic solar control allows you to get uh, both of those. We also can do that with shades, especially exterior shades, because the sun's energy hasn't penetrated the glass yet. And so when we talk about variable solar control, we're talking about both uh, electrochromic or uh, dynamic glazings as well as um, uh, 
automated shades. So we also have what we call a dynamic integrated facades. This is one where we want to um, integrate the dynamic solar control with the lighting system and with the HVAC system so that we can optimize for how much daylight comes in, where we can uh, turn off the electric lighting. And so the whole thing is, is uh, optimized and it can also be connected with the grid to uh, reduce any kind of peak loading uh, day that may be occurring. And here's some exploratory technologies. One is we've been working on vacuum glazing for a while. We have several projects on the way. Uh, this is one where it's a very, very thin gap between the glass, but you have to have spaces that hold the glass apart. Those spaces are thermal uh, shorts. So we're trying to work on uh, you know low cost, um, uh, highly manufacturable vacuum glazing. Uh, there have been some projects uh, that have been commercialized, but right now we don't really have a true low-cost viable pro uh, product on the market. We've also been looking at Aerogel, and one of the challenges with Aerogel is we want to reduce the haze. Uh, this is a very highly insulating material. This is pretty clear. You can see through it, but it's still got a little bit of haze. We want to get this to be very, very clear and highly insulating as another alternative Instead of having a triple pane window or a vacuum window, you put this insulating material between the panes of glass. And the last one is a very uh, early stage exploratory. This is a thermochromic um, technology that changes its, its optical characteristics based on the temperature of the glass uh, passively without an active device. But it also generates electricity when it's in the opaque stage. So it can generate electricity and modulate the, sun, the sun's energy. So in summary, um, to achieve low energy buildings, it's critical to have high performance windows. You can't get there without really good quality windows. And you know, while we have triple pane windows on the market today and we have dynamic solar control, we need to get these integrated together uh, so that we can uh, reduce the, the market barriers and, and have a much more affordable, viable uh, solutions that can uh, achieve uh, very low energy. And when we, when we add in a, an R10 highly insulating dynamic window, we can actually have a home that would use less energy than if it didn't have any windows at all. So it's actually a net, uh, a net energy uh, positive provider if it's in a mixed or cold climate when you combine those two technologies. And there is extensive amount of tools that exist uh, with, uh, with the national labs and with the uh, rating organizations that can help with the performance of windows and designing windows and then we take those uh the window impact and we put them into whole building tools that can really show uh, what the uh the energy benefits are so i hope this was interesting and uh i i want i want to give you some some references here's some references some links that give you more information and i hope you uh learned something and uh, and i uh, wish you uh well in in designing uh the next generation of uh, buildings for America. So thank you and, and take care.